One that has been very popular lately is the gravitational time dilation model. And in this model, we're questioning the variable t. Have we made some assumptions about how time works? And I guarantee you we've made some assumptions about how time works. The question is, uh, how, how off are we? You see, a lot of people have this impression that time is sort of absolute and it's the same everywhere, and that is, in fact, not the case. Uh, time is uh, variable. You can change the rate at which time flows. And so the idea behind gravitational time dilation is that the universe has, in fact, aged millions of years, while only 6,000 years uh, have elapsed on the Earth. Okay, and so the idea is clocks on Earth tick very, very slowly, while the rest of the universe goes quite rapid, and therefore the light has plenty of time. Uh, from the universe's perspective, it, it trickles along at its ordinary rate, taking millions of years from the universe's perspective, but from Earth's perspective, this would all happen very, very quickly. And so, in fact, this is based on uh, good solid physics. General relativity has shown that the rate at which time passes is related to the gravitational potential. It depends on other things, too, like velocity, for example. But clocks will tick more slowly when they are in a gravitational well. I had the pleasure of living out in uh, Boulder, Colorado for a number of years, and we, had, we have the atomic clock out there that the nation sets its time by, and it was always fun as a local phone call to go up and set your watch to the atomic clock. Kind of fun, and they, but you know what? There, there's another one at sea level, another atomic clock at sea level. You know, it ticks at a slightly different rate because it's closer to the center of the Earth, you see. It's, it's in a deeper gravitational well is the term for that. Gravity affects time. A clock on a mountain does not tick at the same rate as a clock at sea level. The clock at sea level ticks slower. Gravity slows down time. If the Earth were near the center of a finite universe, that is, if at some point the galaxies stop, and there simply are no more beyond that, imagine a sphere of galaxies with the Earth roughly in the center, it doesn't have to be exactly in the center, but if that is in fact the case, the Earth would be in such a gravitational well, and time would flow uh, more slowly on the Earth than it would in the rest of the universe. And so this potentially could get starlight here in thousands of years, as measured by clocks on Earth. And one of the nice features about this model is it allows for uh, interactions that we normally think of as taking many millions of years. For example, these two, here we see two interacting galaxies. Now, if in fact these galaxies were not created this way, then it would take a long time for two sort of normal galaxies to come together and interact this way. And so one of the things that uh, gravitational time dilation uh, might solve are issues like this. So if you, th if you think that, that God would not have created these galaxies already in the process of collision, then gravitational time dilation is for you. That's probably the model that you're going to prefer. So gravitational time dilation is, is based on the well-tested physics of general relativity, but it uses alternate boundary conditions. You see, folks who believe in the Big Bang assume that the universe is infinite, or at least that there are galaxies throughout, and Earth's position is not special. And if you plug in those boundary conditions, there would be no gravitational well, and time would flow about the same uh, everywhere. But uh, if the universe is finite, and if Earth is near the, the center of a finite mass distribution, then time will indeed flow more slowly on the Earth. Now, there have been a lot of criticisms of this model. You know, people have said, well, does time really flow slower if the Earth is in a well like that? Well, certainly it would. Certainly it would. And so I, I haven't seen uh, any really sound criticisms save one. There is one potential problem that I have seen in the literature, and that is questioning the amount by which this effect happens. Is the gravitational time dilation significant enough to get starlight here in 6,000 years. And there have been papers written that suggest that maybe it's not. In other words, the, the rate at which clocks tick in the outer universe is almost identical as to what they tick here. They're only slightly faster. Of course, if the universe is smaller, that rate would be different because that would make that gravitational well steeper, and so that could potentially solve the problem. But as you expand the universe, that light gets stretched out, it gets redshifted, and so the question is, can, can this model be adapted in such a way that it gets starlight here in 6,000 years in a way that is compatible with known redshifts? And that has not yet been determined. So a lot of people think that we've sort of got it here, and maybe we're on the right track. This may indeed be on the right track, but the details have not yet been resolved. So this is definitely a potential solution to the distant starlight is issue but there are some details to be worked out. It has not been rigorously shown to get light here in 6,000 years, but it will definitely get light here in less than um, what is assumed in the Big Bang scenario.